Pledge of Allegiance. Is this on? First item on the agenda. Do we have a motion to accept the approval of the minutes of the regular school committee meeting held on May 2nd? Yes, second. second. Any objections? Nope. Motion passes. Okay. Moving along to the best part yes. of the meeting is our presentations. Dr. Burke. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, this is by far our most exciting and our favorite school committee meeting of the entire year. Um, it is when we get to certainly honor um, our students of the year, but also those educators who have dedicated their careers to the Chelsea Public Schools in order to help get students to be students of the year, as well as all of our students who are our wonderful, wonderful students. So, without further delay, I am going to start to announce our students of the year. Um, what I would like is I would like the student to actually come up here to the middle of the alcove, turn around and face the community. And the reason why you have to turn around and face the community is not only because you're facing the audience here, but you're also facing cable TV camera over there. So you don't want to face us, because then they only see your backside on TV, right? You want the front, okay? So I'm gonna ask you to come up, to stand, and um, your teachers and your administrators from your school are going to come up over to the podium. Please speak into the microphone so that it does um, relay over into um, uh, cable TV. Um, and we're gonna say some wonderful things about you. So the first one is um, Giovanni De Leon Lara, from the Berkowitz Elementary School. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna just turn around. All right. And Mr. DeLady, would you introduce people? Hi, my name is Adam DeLady. I'm the principal at the Berkowitz School. I'm happy to introduce Alyssa Sadowski, who's Giovanni's teacher, and she will be speaking on his behalf. Good evening, Dr. Burke, school committee members, and honored guests. My name is Alyssa Sadowski, and I am a social communication teacher at the Berkowitz School. Many students show qualities of strong academic performance, good character, and leadership. Giovanni De Leon Lara does all of these things, but what makes Gio special is his ability to impact others in a positive manner. Sure, Gio is kind, respectful, caring, and has a great work ethic, but I can say with confidence that every single person that has gotten to know Gio has become a better person because they know him. Children and adults, classmates, teachers, and family members, we have all learned how to be better because of Gio. I've had the pleasure of having Gio for the last three years. Throughout my time as his teacher, I've had the unique experience of watching him mature socially, emotionally, and academically. Gio has become a face that everyone recognizes throughout our building, as he has been a good role model accomplishing all tasks that have been presented to him. Gio has many strengths, but his true passion is art. Gio enjoys creating intricate art pieces during his free time, including 3D models of the MBTA train cars. Gio has not only taught me every stop on the MBTA blue line, but he has also taught me the importance of perseverance through the face of diversity. Gio truly is a model for all of us. We thank him for all his hard work, all that he has taught us, and we would like to congratulate him on being the 2019 Berkowitz Student of the Year.
Ladies and gentlemen, going in alphabetical order of our schools, we have the Brown Middle School next, Jose Hernandez Matute. is very well respected by both the students and the faculty of the Brown Middle School. One of the reasons for this is that he is able to find a balance rarely seen in middle school. Jose is a scholar, a curious scientist, a comedian, and a kind student. Jose was a bit nervous at the start of eighth grade. He had grown so much as a learner of English that he had transitioned into new classes. Jose was a bit nervous about this, but in spite of this, he truly rose to the occasion. He worked hard to understand more advanced textbooks and to improve his reading, writing, speaking, and listening in English. At the beginning of the year, Jose was a bit shy and hesitant to ask questions. Now he's one of the top participators in all of his classes and has developed into a strong reader and writer. His confidence as a learner is evident. Jose also has a growth mindset. He found himself as a reader this year in Reader's Workshop. At the start of the year, he wrote that reading isn't my thing, but after discovering a couple of books about birds and science, and oh yuck, being a special favorite, he became a voracious reader. Jose always has an interesting fact to share or a picture from his reading, and he's one of the top library users in his class. His love and joy of learning bring more light to our classrooms every day. Jose is a curious and effervescent young man. He is eager to grow not only academically, but as a whole person and strives to be a kind individual. His desire and work for this growth is inspiring to both his fellow peers and his teachers. Jose loves to tell jokes to spark joy in others. Jose, your qualities of curiosity, a love for learning, perseverance, a sense of humor and kindness will help you become a successful high school student. We are proud of you as a student and as a person. Remember that you have the amazing gift of being bilingual. We are fortunate to have you as a student in Chelsea. Jose es muy respetado por los estudiantes y la facultad de la Escuela Intermedia Brown. Una de las razones de esto es que puede encontrar un equilibrio que no se ve a menudo en la escuela intermedia. Jose es un erudito, un científico curioso, un comediante y un estudiante amable. Jose estaba un poco nervioso al enseño del grado 8. Había crecido tanto como un estudiante de inglés que había pasado en las clases con menos apoyo. Jose se enfrentó a la desafío. Trabajó todo por entender libros de textos más avanzados y para mejorar su lectura, escritora, expresión oral y comprensión auditiva en inglés. A principio de año, Jose era tímido y en comprensión auditiva, I'm sorry, era tímido y vacilante en responder preguntas. Ahora, él es uno de los mejores participantes en sus clases y se ha convertido en un lector y escritor fuerte. Su confianza como aprendiz es evidente. Es evidente que José tiene una mentalidad de crecimiento. A principios de año, escribo que la doctora no es lo mío, pero... Después de descubrir un par de libros sobre aves y ciencia, se convirtió en un lector voraz. José siempre tiene un hecho interesante para compartir o una foto para mostrarme de su lectora. Es el fuerzo constante de José en todas sus clases y su energía positiva han jugado un papel importante en su éxito. Jose es un joven curioso y efervescente. Él está ansioso por crecer no solo académicamente, sino como una persona completa y se esfuerza por ser una persona amable. Su deseo y trabajo para este crecimiento es inspirador tanto para sus compañeros como para sus maestros. A José le gusta contar chistes para hacer sonreír a maestros y compañeros de clase. José, 
tenta éxito en la escuela secundaria debido a sus cualidades de curiosidad, amor por el aprendizaje, perseverancia, sentido del humor y amabilidad. Estamos orgullosos de ti como persona y como estudiante. Recuerda que tienes el increíble don de ser bilingüe. Somos afortunados de tenerte como estudiante en Chelsea. From Chelsea High School, Reem El Mahil. You have to do it in the microphone. You have to speak in the microphone. Uh, so I am speaking on behalf of Reem El Mahil and just wanted to say. Uh, that she's a wonderful student, a very positive presence in the school in general. Uh, starting with activities, uh, she plays volleyball, uh, she is active in National Honor Society, and for any of you uh, who've seen the little tiny libraries with the books, that's courtesy of National Honor Society that are going to be around Chelsea. Oh, so that's amazing. Uh, she's a an officer in student government, um, and she's an influencer st statewide um, in the Student Government Association that represents students at the state level. Um, she's an MGH Youth Scholar, and she's in a book club. Um, a recent book they read was the autobiography of Michelle Obama. Uh, she's a knitting club, and uh, her college goals um, include all the Ivy League schools, Tufts University, and Amherst. Uh, her, one of her key mottos, and I, I love this one, you have to pave your own way to success. I like that one, you have to pave your own way to success. Um, this, is, this I found incredible. The, she, uh, you can only take four classes at the high school at one time. She signed up for five AP classes. That's the hardest level of class you can get. She signed up for five. It's only possible to take four. Uh, so that says something about Reem. Uh, her goal is to be pre-med, um, but she's also very interested in world politics, uh, women's health, um, and recently advocacy to raise awareness for the genocide uh, that is currently occurring with the Rohingya people. Uh, from her family, I learned that she's very curious. Uh, she was very curious, still is, um, but as a younger kid, just asked lots and lots of questions. Um, and I want to conclude with a statement for one, from one of her favorite teachers, Miss Asher, um, who uh, told her, take advantage of every opportunity you can. I want to congratulate you tonight, Reem. From the Clark Avenue School, Sergio Alacron. Strength comes in many forms. Though it 
doesn't always announce itself. Strength can be used for many things, but it doesn't always partner with wisdom. Strength can, be built, can build a city or break it. Strength can save a nation or forsake it. We can use our strength to build a hospital just as we can use our strength to build walls. If our theme is not already apparent, then let me state it bluntly. We are here to recognize one really strong dude. Ladies and gentlemen, with profound pleasure that I, it, it's with profound pleasure that I present you with this year's Clark Avenue Middle School Student of the Year, Sergio Alarcon. <clears throat> When I asked his teachers to describe Sergio, I was given these words and phrases, cheerful, thoughtful, helpful, encouraged, tries his best, smiles, sportsmanship, outstanding, example, strive, motivated, struggle. We don't always get to use both, word, both the words struggle and smile when talking about a student. The secret, it seems to me, is that one of Sergio's strengths lies not in the struggle, but in the smile. Sergio has been a pleasure to work with, and your classmates are lucky to have you as a partner in learning. You bring the smile to class and use it not just for yourself, but those around you. Your smile is a sign of strength because it presents us not with a vision of what's wrong with the day, but with a vision of greatness we believe we can achieve. Sergio, today we celebrate you as a student and as a kind person we believe to make the world a better place. And so because we believe you are ready, we live with these challenges. Continue to share your strength with others. Continue to build up and encourage those you encounter in life. And finally, do not forget to ask for help when you need it. For, for while we all come to the day with different strengths, we can be superhuman when we work together. Ladies and gentlemen, we recognize the Clark Avenue Middle School Student of the Year, Sergio Alec. From the Hook School, we have Luis Angel and Luis Miguel Avarinha. Avarinha. <laughs> See, you need to have double the number of people talking about you. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Adele Labarski and I'm the principal of the Hooks Elementary School. I want to first of all congratulate, congratulate Luis Angel Alvarenga and Luis Miguel Alvarenga, our students of the year, and his, their teachers, Lily Morin, Ashley Boucher, Kristen DePoalo, and our phys ed teacher, Amy Drake. Um, okay, my name is Lily Morin, and this is Kristen DiPaolo and Ashley Boucher, and we have had the pleasure of being Louis Miguel and Louis Angel's fourth grade teachers at the Hook School. You may be wondering why there are so many of us up here today. <laughs> when putting forth nominations for the Hook School Student of the Year, for us, the choice was clear. The problem was, there were two clear choices. 
Louis Miguel and Louis Angel both embody the characteristics of a model Hook School student. However, we were faced with choosing just one. This was an impossible task because they are both so equally deserving. So we broke the rules and nominated them together as co-students of the year. They are both respectful, responsible, and cooperative. They are not only extremely hardworking, but are also incredibly kind and generous. This is the reputation of the boys for the past four years. They are known as people you can count on and will offer help no matter the situation. Louis Angel is a dedicated student. He has to work hard and persevere each day, and he does. He has given 100% of his effort every day that he has been at the Hook School, and he has overcome many challenges, all with a positive attitude and a smile on his face. Louis Angel is kind, thoughtful, and understanding of students who are struggling. He uses his positivity to make his peers around him into better people. He is always the first to play with someone or to cheer someone up, even if he doesn't know them. He has an ability to see the good in every person he encounters and genuinely wants to help everyone succeed. Luis Miguel is an enthusiastic student. There have been topics in school that have not come so easy for him. However, he does not back down from a challenge. He comes in every day eager to learn new things and genuinely wants to improve his skills. Luis Miguel is funny and understands how to use his sense of humor appropriately. His humor makes the classroom a happier place, and his cheerful spirit is contagious. He can uplift a room just by being himself. He is someone other students look to as a source of inspiration and support. <laughs> Luis Angel and Luis Miguel have so many wonderful qualities that will ensure they have a successful life and will certainly lead to amazing things as they continue through the grades in the Chelsea Public Schools. Not only do they have great skills individually, but they are also an amazing team. They are both extremely supportive of each other and want to see their brother achieve as much, if not more, than themselves. Separately, they both bring so much to the table, but together we truly, truly feel that they will change the world. Our whole community at the Hook School will feel a loss as they move on to middle school next year. But we know <laughs> that they are off to do amazing things. <clears throat> um, we are extremely proud to call Louis Angel and Louis Miguel the Hook School Co-Students of the Year. So I have been lucky to know Louis Miguel and Louis Angel for the past four years. And I'm their phys ed teacher, and they also help me with the bus every day. Um, and I'm going to miss our talks at the end of the day, their silly jokes with one another, and especially, as they've mentioned, how they connect with their peers, from first graders walking down the hallway to their friends in their classes, just always giving a smile, a high five, have a great day. I can tell that it means a lot to our community. Um, they are so sure of themselves, and they're so comfortable in their own skin, which for kids that are entering middle school, it's exactly what you want. And it's the best thing that can a parent or a teacher can ask for. I'm so excited to see them take on a new school and make the same connections that they have at the Hook School. Um, thank you, Louis Miguel and Louis Angel, for being the bright spot of my day and all of our days. Don't start reading until you get home. <laughs> awesome.
set? Okay. <laughs> From the Kelly Elementary School, Jared Flores Sandoval. Good evening, my name is Lisa Lenweaver. I'm the principal at the Kelly School. And I am honored to speak on behalf of our fourth grade team uh, to name Jared Flores, our Kelly School Student of the Year this year. Jared always treats his classmates and his teachers with respect and kindness, and he always puts forth his best effort. Jared's in our, our Camino strand, and so he spends his time learning in both languages, English and Spanish, and has been able to, to work hard and achieve in both. When one of his classmates needs help, Jared's quick to offer his assistance. He listens patiently to others and responds with genuine kindness to a friend in need. When Jared confronts a challenge, he perseveres until he finds a solution. Not just trying once, not just trying twice, he's gonna stick with it until he finds it. And he works collaboratively with, his, with others and doesn't give up when things get hard. Jared's been a positive role model for his classmates and the whole school, and we're proud to name him as the Kelly School Student of the Year. En español, uh, Jared Flores merece el premio del estudiante del año de la Escuela Kelly porque trata a sus compañeros y maestros con respeto y am am amabilidad uh, y siempre hace su mejor esfuerzo. Cuando uno de sus compañeros de clase necesita ayuda, Jared se apresura a ofrecer su ayuda. Escucha pacientemente a los demás y habla con genuina am amabilidad. Cuando Jared se enfrenta a un, a un desafío, perse, persevera hasta encontrar una solución. Trabaja en colaboración con otros y no se rinde cuando las cosas se ponen difíciles. Estamos orgullosos de nombrarlo Kelly School Estudiante del Año. Congratulations, Jared. From the Sokolowski School, Andrea Rodriguez. Hello, everybody. I'm Nate Myers, the principal of the Sokolowski. I can say about Andrea that she brings her personal best every day, and she most definitely lives the mission of the Sokolowski School. Mrs. Keene, her homeroom teacher, and Mr. English, her math teacher, will Tell us more. It is our pleasure to present Andrea Rodriguez as the Sokolowski School Student of the Year. Andrea is a wonderful girl and one of the most hardworking students that the teachers at the Sokolowski School have ever had the pleasure of teaching. We would like to share some memories from the teachers she has had over the past four years. From her first grade teacher, Miss Bordelon. As a first grader, Andrea adjusted beautifully to her new school and helped others to do the same. She would often whisper, persevere to students as they worked through their answers to let them know not to give up on themselves. I have watched her continue this theme of supporting others throughout her time at the Sokolowski School and feel privileged to have watched such a talented, compassionate, hardworking, enthusiastic, and curious learner grow and bloom from her second grade teacher, Ms. Olson. I had the pleasure of having Andrea as my student in second grade. She was and still is an amazing girl who exhibits the true characteristics of a role model for others. I had the privilege of having her visit my room for the past two years to read to my students. She even brought a little lesson to ask questions. I look forward to seeing the phenomenal woman she becomes in the future. This year in fourth grade, we have watched Andrea take on increasingly rigorous tasks with seemingly never failing enthusiasm. Her level of commitment and passion for learning is inspiring to all those around her. Not only does Andrea dedicate 100% of herself to her work each day, but she also inspires others to do the same. This year, she has been a buddy to our functional academic students, helping them to feel fully included during all specialist activities and lessons. 
Also, for the last month of school, Andrea has been giving up her own recess time to go to science. During this time, she either organizes materials or helps the first graders with their work. When asked why she was giving up her own time, she simply said, I just like to help. Andrea is the kind of friend that encourages and motivates her peers to set high goals for themselves. She leads by example with the humblest of attitudes. We would also like to note that during her time at the Sokolowski, Andrea has had nearly perfect attendance, only missing four days over four years. We have no doubt that she will continue to make her family, her friends, her school, and her city proud. Andrea is a very special person with a promising future. We will miss seeing her face at the Sokolowski School, but we know that wherever she is, she will strive, she will succeed, and she will soar. From the Wright Science and Technology Academy, Janitza Sanchez Rodriguez. Congratulations, Janitza. Um, I'm Michelle Martinello, the principal of the Wright Academy, and these are two of Janitza's teachers, Rosette Sorello and Elise Terry. If you're looking for Janitza Sanchez Rodriguez, most mornings she can be found helping Daniel, a student in functional academics. Janitza helps him get his breakfast, materials prepared, and get him feeling ready for the day. Not many students would volunteer to help others, but this isn't surprising coming from Janitza. When in class, Janitza is a leader among her peers. Her voice comes from a place of passion and curiosity about the world, its people, and the social issues that our communities face. Janitza makes her voice heard and asks her questions of her teachers and peers with a seriousness and candidness that many students struggle to find even at the college level. Janitza is a young woman sure of who she is in a world that often tries to tear individuals down. In her own words, words from others only hurt if we let them. But most importantly, our lives are ours to decide and we shouldn't let anyone else decide who we are. This belief gives her the courage to act on her convictions. A friend of hers fondly remembers a moment when she spotted some students absent-mindedly hurting a tree during recess, playing with its branches and snapping off twigs and leaves. Hundreds of students and their teachers either missed this or ignored it, but Janitza took off across the blacktop, screaming at the top of her lungs for the students to stop. And they did. That's the respect that Janitza commands. And she doesn't do things like this because she wants praise or attention. Instead, she is following her own remarkably strong internal compass. Janitza commits to things because they are right and just and fair. That's who she is. This was clearly reflected when we asked WSTA teachers about Janitza. All unanimously agreed. This is a young woman who is not afraid to stand for what she believes in and ask the most difficult questions. Whether this be about police brutality, disrespectful books about the Holocaust, Joan of Arc's questionable leadership, or her list of most hated foods. She, <laughs> she is passionate about learning and social justice, wrote one teacher. She cares deeply about people and their rights, which translates into thoughtful and provoking writing about activism. Janitza is always willing to speak her mind and engage others, both adults and students, in debates and discussions. She is a leader in the room for both discussions and exemplary written work. She is also always willing to help others in need in a friendly and caring way without hesitation, both academically and outside the classroom. Now, we would be missing a monumental part of Janitza's personality if we didn't tell you how her hilarious, 
dark, and witty sense of humor could make her an excellent journalist, speaker, or writer, or perhaps what she already is, an invaluable community member and a great person to call a friend. If you ask Janitza how she feels about others, she will usually respond with something maybe a little shocking about preferring plants to people or her plans for world domination. <laughs> and yet, those who really know her agree with what one of her teachers wrote. Janitza is one of the kindest, most patient students I have ever met. Consistently, Janitza's actions speak even louder than her passionate words. She will work with anyone, take on any challenge, and listen to any feedback. She is loyal, honest, and absolutely uncompromising. In a year when many students can start to lose sight of who they are and what they value, Janitza reminds us of how important it is to know yourself and to do the right thing. The WSTA community will truly miss you, Janitza, and we couldn't be prouder to send you to CHS with the distinction of being our student of the year. From Chelsea Opportunity Academy, Jose Rosa. Thank you, Dr. Burke and school committee and invited guests uh, to be able to present to you. First, I'd like to give a brief uh, story in Spanish followed by one in English. Ahora que estamos terminando nuestro primer año en Chelsea Opportunity Academy, es un honor estar aquí para poner a José como nuestro primer alumno del año. Fue seleccionado por 100% de los adultos que trabajan en nuestra escuela. Yo he conocido a José desde el primer año que llegó a Chelsea High School hace cinco años. Como muchos de noveno grado, le costaba. Uh, no iba a todas sus clases uh, y a veces en los, en, lo encontramos en situaciones uh, donde cuestionamos su disciplina. Pero nunca fue una cosa que impactó a los demás. Prueba de su cariño y honradez fue en el siguiente año cuando estuvo en, en una situación complicado de disciplina, donde él tomó la responsabilidad de algo que pasó y hizo bien a un amigo que realmente no tenía nada que ver con el problema y ese amigo estaba acusado de algo y José lo tomó la responsabilidad. Desde ese día yo sabía que José fue un hombre que, en que yo podía confiar. Él seguía luchando hacia el éxito y con el apoyo del programa de REACH agarró algo de motivación para sus estudios. Pero en mayo del año pasado, todo eso paró cuando José fue víctima de un acto de violencia que casi, pues que puso su su vida en riesgo. Fue durante su recuperación que José fue recomendado para nuestra escuela y con apoyo del programa de REACH. Me recuerdo muy bien cuando fui a visitar José y su mamá en la casa y yo tenía mi entrevista y estaba haciendo así y José me dijo, señor Schmidt, ¿necesitas, necesitas algo para escribir? Sí, José, por favor. Desde el primer día, él fue un líder en nuestra escuela. Hizo excelentes eh, amigos, tanto con el personal que con los compañeros. Hasta él eh, 
se fue conmigo a Nashville uh, y fuimos a dar una presentación frente a otros profesionales en educación. Fue tan re bien recibido que no podíamos caminar en la calle sin que la gente, ¡Ah, José! ¡Excelente presentación! Me recuerdo que fuimos al museo de Johnny Cash y yo pensé, ¡Ah, ese no le va a gustar! Pero no lo pude sacar cuando él encontró la conexión que Johnny Cash tuvo en las artistas que son sus favoritos y, y artistas, artistas modernos. Bueno, ahora que estamos terminando este año, celebramos con José que el domingo se va a graduar de Chelsea High School, ya aceptado en Benjamin Franklin Institute, y no hay otro alumno que merece ser alumno del año de Chelsea Opportunity Academy. As we wrap up our first year at Chelsea Opportunity Academy, it is a great honor to be able to name Jose Rosa as Student of the Year. Our students, uh, our staff, unanimously selected Jose. I remember Jose from the time about five years ago when he showed up at Chelsea High School. Like many freshmen, he would clown around, avoid work we were asking him to do, but never did his behavior have a negative impact on others. Proof of his care for others came during his sophomore year when caught in the middle of a disciplinary situation, he took responsibility owning his share and more. From that day forward, I knew Jose Rosa was a young man who could be trusted. His struggles to be successful in school continued, but with the relentless support of REACH, he was able to maintain momentum. Then, in May of 2018, the momentum would come to an abrupt halt as Jose became the victim of a violent act that nearly took his life. It was during this recovery that Jose was recommended for Chelsea Opportunity Academy by his teachers in the REACH program. I remember very well that visit when I went to Jose's house and with his mother. I was trying to fill out a uh, survey and find out more about Jose, and he could obviously see I was searching for something, and Jose stopped me and said, Mr. Schmidt, do you need a pen? <laughs> and I did. We, uh, from that day forward, uh, Jose has been an incredible influence in our school. He built great relationships. He helped create our school norms and joined me as a co-presenter at a professional conference in Nashville, Tennessee. Needless to say, Jose floored all of those who watched him present in Nashville, even getting a high five on the street as we walked down uh, the main drag listening to music. Uh, we went to the Johnny Cash Museum something I thought, oh, I hope he likes this, but I wasn't sure. But one, I couldn't get him out of there, and he started finding how Johnny Cash had influenced even someone like Snoop Dogg, and he was very impressed and now is actually even a, a little Johnny Cash fan. <laughs> As we wind up our first year at Chelsea Opportunity Academy, I want to celebrate with you tonight Jose as our first student of the year, soon to be a high school graduate this Sunday, already accepted, accepted in the Benjamin Franklin Institute of Technology, and there's simply no one else who's as deserving as Jose to be our first student of the year. Is Dave Ferraro still here? Mm, did he have to leave? Okay, all right. Um, oh, go ahead. Absolutely, Jose, sorry. <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Rosa. Uh, I would like to start off by saying I am honored to be recognized as the Chelsea Opportunity Academy Student of the Year as a founding member with the big kick from REACH. 
Next, I'd like to give a big thank you to all the staff members at the Chelsea Opportunity Academy and the REACH program. Although I went through the toughest situation of my life over the past year, both REACH and COA gave me hope that I could finish what I started. I always said that I would graduate from high school and not drop out. I never knew how hard that goal would be. Now it's June 2019 and I am a better version of me. The person I am today cannot compare to the person I was a year ago. I have gained confidence in myself academically through being a part of COA. Today, I am fully motivated and know what I want to do for myself today and for years to come. Next year, I will have the chance to go to Benjamin Franklin Institute of Technology to study and to become an electrician and will be the first in my family to go to college. I have plans that line up with my goals for the future. All along, my main supporter has always been my mother. I want to thank her, my family, and all of you who have supported me to graduate from Chelsea High School and Chelsea Opportunity Academy. Thank you for choosing me as the Chelsea Opportunity Academy Student of the Year. It really means a lot to me. Thank you. Jose, you make us all very proud. All of you make us proud. Um, what I would like to do now is I would like to call up to the podium um, Executive Director of Administration and Finance, um, Monica Lamboy, who is going to talk about um, the student who created our budget cover and the tradition that we have in the Chelsea Public Schools. Thank you, everyone. My name is Monica Lamboy, Director of Administration and Finance. One of my jobs is to put together the annual budget for the Chelsea Public Schools, and that involves many days and nights in front of a spreadsheet and my computer and typing and writing and, you know, pretty mundane stuff. And then I learned that I get to pick out artwork for the cover of the budget document. And I have to say that was the highlight of the whole process. And I had many wonderful recommendations for the artwork um, and uh, selected the work by Douglas Tejada Perez, um, which is shown up there. And I honestly didn't know how old he was when I got the piece of, of artwork. I thought it was absolutely stunning, and any artist of any age would have been proud to have created a piece of art like that. So um, this is the end product of, of what it looked like when we created the budget from his art. And I am going to give this to him, but I was thinking on my way up that when he's an official artist that these books might be worth a lot of money. So <laughs> we probably should keep a few for ourselves. But Congratulations if he wants to come Douglas, up. Douglas, are you here? I know He's that right here. Ah, He's right Douglas, here. come <laughs> forward. Madam Chair, if I may um, recommend um, that we um, put a, a hold on the proceedings and we wait uh, a few minutes to honor our retirees so that we could move towards um, the steps that need the city manager here for. Superintendent contract. Okay. Do we have a second? second. Any objections? No? Um, and Madam Chair, just to, for the audience, um, uh, Superintendent elect Almi Abeda, would you stand? Where is she? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are so looking forward to, um, to um, Dr. Abeda joining us as of August 1st. You know that um, there will be a transition time frame where um, I will be staying on 
and um, we will really be a, a strong partnership from August to December. Um, and you will be left in very, very good hands. So um, I am really excited about the next few months. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to new business. Consideration and action to approve the memorandum of agreement between the Chelsea School Committee and Chelsea Administration Association effective July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. Explanation. The agreement between the Chelsea School Committee and Chelsea Administration Association was ratified by the union on May 28, 2019. Roll call. On the motion to approve the memorandum of agreement between the Chelsea School Committee and Chelsea Administrators Association, effective July 1, 2019 through June 30, 2020. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Carlisle? Yes. Ms. Garcia? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Mr. DePato? Yes. Mr. Ambrosino? Yes. That's nine in the affirmative and one absent. The motion carries. Nine in the affirmative, one absent. Motion carries. Next. The Human Resource Subcommittee to the School Committee recommends the adoption of the attached contract which has been negotiated between Dr. Abeta and the Human Resource Subcommittee to the School Committee in this enclosure H. Roll call. No. No. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. On the motion to adopt the contract which has been negotiated between Dr. Abeta and the Human Resources Subcommittee to the School Committee. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Carlisle? Yes. Ms. Garcia? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Mr. DePato? Yes. That's eight in the affirmative and one absent. Eight in the affirmative, one absent. Motion passes. Welcome, Dr. Abeta. We have a second. No, no objection. Motion passes. Back to the fun stuff. Well, All this right. was fun too. It was. <laughs> <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, one of the other highlights we have at this point in the, in the school year is to honor all of our retirees who are, um, you know, they've dedicated so many years, so much of their life to our students, our staff, our full community of We Welcome and Educate. And so it is with great honor that I get to actually stand up here and read the resolution from the school committee um, to, the, to the retiree. And yes, retirees, you have to do the same thing as the students. You have to come up to the middle of the alcove, turn around and face the audience. Um, so with, um, I am gonna go out of alphabetical order because Dave has been very patient and I thank you so much for that and he's been patient his entire career with us. Mm -hmm. But um, Dave Ferraro is first, please come up. <laughs> Whereas David Ferraro has been in the Chelsea Public Schools for over 20 years. And whereas David has been a dedicated assistant director of facilities since 2017, as well as management specialist for plant and operations from 1998 to 2017, and acting director of buildings and grounds in 2015. And David has been a positive role model for students and staff throughout the district. And whereas David has conducted his responsibilities with dignity and professionalism, and whereas he has brought honor to himself, his family, and his colleagues through his contributions and dedications to the youth of Chelsea, and therefore be it resolved that the superintendent and the members of the Chelsea School Committee extend their sincerest gratitude and heartfelt congratulations to David Ferraro on his contributions to and career with the Chelsea School Department on this, the occasion of his retirement.
Nancy Acevedo. Whereas Nancy Acevedo has been in the Chelsea Public Schools for over 29 years, and Nancy has been a dedicated senior clerk, typist, and principal clerk since 1990 at the Shirtliff School and the Hook School. And whereas Nancy has been a positive role model for students and staff throughout the district, and Nancy has conducted her responsibilities with dignity and professionalism, and whereas she has brought honor to herself, her family, and her colleagues, through her contributions and dedication to the youth of Chelsea, and therefore be it resolved that the superintendent and the members of the Chelsea School Committee extend their sincerest gratitude and heartfelt congratulations to Nancy Acevedo on her contributions to and career with the Chelsea School Department on this, the occasion of her retirement. Paul Cameron. Whereas Paul Cameron has been in the Chelsea Public Schools for over 10 years, and whereas Paul has been a dedicated paraprofessional since 2008 at the Clark Avenue School, and also worked for the after school program and summer program. And whereas Paul has been a positive role model for students and staff throughout the district, and Paul has conducted his responsibilities as an educator with dignity and professionalism. He has brought honor to himself, his family, and his colleagues through his contributions and dedication to the youth of Chelsea, and therefore be it resolved that the superintendent and the members of the Chelsea School Committee extend their sincerest gratitude and heartfelt congratulations to Paul Cameron on his contributions to and career with the Chelsea School Department on this, the occasion of his retirement. My friend Susan Alouche. You have to understand, Susan Alouche and I go back to um, carpooling together to Salem State College years ago. She had the car, I didn't. Whereas Susan Alouche has been in the Chelsea Public Schools for over 35 years. And whereas Susan has been a dedicated math lead coach since 1999, as well as kindergarten teacher from 1983 to 1996, an elementary teacher from 1996 to 1999 at the Shirtliff School, Kelly School, and Hook School, and also worked for the before and after school programs, programs during school breaks and summer programs. And whereas Susan has been a positive role model for students and staff throughout the district, Susan has conducted her responsibilities as an educator with dignity and professionalism. And whereas she has brought honor to herself, her family, and her colleagues through her contributions and dedication to the youth of Chelsea, and therefore be it resolved that the superintendent and the members of the Chelsea School Committee extend their sincerest gratitude and heartfelt congratulations to Susan Alouche on her contributions to and career with the Chelsea School Department on this, the occasion of her retirement.
Donald Higgins. Whereas Donald Higgins has been in the Chelsea Public Schools for over 21 years. Donald has been a dedicated buildings maintenance person since 1997 at Chelsea High School and Williams School. And whereas Donald has been a positive role model for students and staff throughout the district, and whereas Donald has conducted his responsibilities with dignity and professionalism, and he has brought honor to himself, his family, and his colleagues through his contributions and dedication to the youth of Chelsea. And therefore, be it resolved that the superintendent and the members of the Chelsea School Committee extend their sincerest gratitude and heartfelt congratulations to Donald Higgins on his contributions to and career with the Chelsea School Department on this, the occasion of his retirement. Joanne Hurley. Whereas Joanne Hurley has been in the Chelsea Public Schools for over three years, and whereas Joanne has been a dedicated evaluation team leader since 2015 at the Sokolowski School and the Berkowitz School, and Joanne has been a positive role model for students and staff throughout the district. And whereas Joanne has conducted her responsibilities as an educator with dignity and professionalism, and whereas she has brought honor to herself, her family, and her colleagues through her contributions and dedication to the youth of Chelsea. And therefore, be it resolved that the superintendent and the members of the Chelsea School Committee extend their sincerest gratitude and heartfelt congratulations to Joanne Hurley on her contributions to and career with the Chelsea School Department on this, the occasion of her retirement. Julie Kerber. Whereas Julie Kerber has been in the Chelsea Public Schools for over 33 years, and whereas Julie has been a dedicated special education teacher since 1985 at the Shirtliff School, Williams School, and Kelly School, and whereas Julie has been a positive role model for students and staff throughout the district, and Julie has conducted her responsibilities as an educator with dignity and professionalism. And she has brought honor to herself, her family, and her colleagues through her contributions and dedication to the youth of Chelsea. And therefore, be it resolved that the superintendent and the members of the Chelsea School Committee extend their sincerest gratitude and heartfelt congratulations to Julie Kerber on her contributions to and career with the Chelsea School Department on this, the occasion of her retirement. You have to understand, I used to teach with Julie, so. <laughs> Lisa Sanagate. Whereas Lisa Santagate has been in the Chelsea Public Schools for over 11 years, 
And whereas Lisa has been a dedicated teacher since 2008 at the Sokolowski School, as well as long-term substitute in 2007, assistant principal in 2017, and mentor from 2012 to 14. And whereas Lisa has been a positive role model for students and staff throughout the district, and Lisa has conducted her responsibilities as an educator with dignity and professionalism, and whereas she has brought honor to herself, her family, and her colleagues through her contributions and dedication to the youth of Chelsea, and therefore be it resolved that the superintendent and the members of the Chelsea School Committee extend their sincerest gratitude and heartfelt congratulations to Lisa Sanagate on her contributions to and career with the Chelsea School Department on this, the occasion of her retirement. Constance Scanlon. Whereas Constance Scanlon, Connie, has been in the Chelsea Public Schools for over 33 years, and whereas Constance has been a dedicated special education and reading teacher since 2006 at the Sokolowski School and Kelly School, and whereas Constance has been a positive role model for students and staff throughout the district, and whereas Constance has conducted her responsibilities as an educator with dignity and professionalism, and she has brought honor to herself, her family, and her colleagues through her contributions and dedication to the youth of Chelsea, and therefore be it resolved that the superintendent and the members of the Chelsea School Committee extend their sincerest gratitude and heartfelt con congratulations to Constance Scanlon on her contributions to and career with the Chelsea School Department on this, the occasion of her retirement. Yoling Oriana. Yoling? No? no? She's not here. We'll make sure she gets it. Ah. Tina Sullivan. Whereas Tina Sullivan has been in the Chelsea Public Schools for over 39 years. And whereas Tina has been a dedicated Director of Human Resources since 1995, as well as a senior clerk stenographer from 1973 to 1980 and 1986 to 1993, and personnel specialist from 1993 to 95 at Central Office. And whereas Tina has been a positive role model for students and staff throughout the district. And whereas Tina has conducted her responsibilities with dignity and professionalism. And whereas she has brought honor to herself, her family, and her colleagues through her contributions and dedication to the youth of Chelsea. And therefore, be it resolved that the superintendent, your friend Mary, and the members of the Chelsea School Committee extend their sincerest gratitude and heartfelt congratulations to Tina Sullivan 
on her contributions to and career with the Chelsea School Department on this, the occasion of her retirement. Okay, we have one more retiree to honor. And we're sort of preloading it, because she's technically not retired until September 30th. However, Linda Bro. Whereas, Linda Bro has been in the Chelsea Public Schools for 26 years. And whereas, Linda has been a dedicated deputy superintendent since 2017 and has overseen human resources since 2018, as well as a paraprofessional from 1993 to 1998, an ESL teacher from 1998 to 2001, an ESL TBE coordinator from 1999 to 2001, administrative intern from 2001 to 2002, assistant principal with me as the principal at Clark Avenue School <laughs> from 2002 to 2005, principal of the Clark Avenue School from 2005 to 2011, an assistant superintendent from 2011 to 2017, she has served at the Williams North Early Learning Center and Clark Avenue School. And whereas Linda has been a positive role model for students and staff throughout the district, and whereas Linda has conducted her responsibilities as an educator with dignity and professionalism, and whereas she has brought honor to herself, her family, and her colleagues through her contributions and dedication to the youth of Chelsea, and therefore be it resolved that the superintendent, me, your friend, and the members of the Chelsea School Committee extend their sincerest gratitude and heartfelt congratulations to Linda Bro on her contributions to and career with the Chelsea School Department on this, the occasion of her retirement. I just want to say we love everybody that's been here and the teachers and you guys saw the whole school committee came up for Tina Sullivan and Linda Bro because they've had to deal with us over the years closely so <laughs> they've been very patient with us and they really take their time to explain stuff and we work together and we just appreciate the support um, they gave us learning the different departments of the school committee. So this is why we all came up and we appreciate, but we appreciate all you guys that have given the time here.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have two special awards. We're going to take a recess after um, the next two awards. Um, certainly, and you can take pictures, and um, and we'll move on. We'll come back into session, and we'll move on with the the traditional June school committee meeting. However, there are two special awards that we would also like to give this evening. The first one is to. Um, the Parent Information Center, and I am going to read the resolution, and then I know that there are a couple of school committee members that would like to um, to, to say some words. But I would like to ask um, the pa Director of Parent Information Center, Danny Mojica, to come up, and any of your staff that are here with you tonight. I know I saw a few of them come in to, with you. So please come up. This resolution comes deeply from all of us um, because this Parent Information Center, uh, our staff live and breathe every single day. We welcome and educate. They are, are the leaders in our mission statement and we're so proud of everything that they do. So, without further ado, whereas the staff of the Parent Information Center and the Parent Information Center Director Daniel Mojica often serve as the first point of contact in the school department for many students and families, and whereas the Parent Information Center welcomes students and families in a safe and understanding environment, and whereas Parent Information Center Director Daniel Mojica's leadership sets an example throughout the district and the community, and whereas the Parent Information Center staff go above and beyond their duties to help connect families with appropriate resources. And whereas the Parent Information Center staff have brought honor to themselves, their families, their colleagues, and their community through their contributions and dedication to the Chelsea Public Schools. And therefore, be it resolved, that the superintendent and the members of the Chelsea School Committee extend their sincerest gratitude and heartfelt thanks to the Parent Information Center and the Parent Information Center Director Daniel Mojica for their hard work in welcoming and assisting the students and families of Chelsea. Um, as a member of the school committee, I, I know I speak for everyone in the community, how important the Parent Information Center is um, to our students, to our kids, to our families, to our parents. Um, and through the years, I've had nothing but great experiences there consistently with all staff. Um, so just super grateful on behalf of all the parents for all the work and the care that you provide. Um, you know, as you can imagine, it's, we're a multilingual um, multicultural community and everybody that has arrived to the Parent Information Center has always had such a great experience. Um, so thank you so much for all you do. Last award of the evening, um, the Certificate of Recognition, I'd like to have Amanda Alpert come forward. <laughs> Amanda is our coordinator for physical education, health, and athletics. It's a big job, um, and Amanda is doing a wonderful job at it. But the school committee would like to present to you this certificate of recognition. To Amanda Alpert for obtaining the Certified Athletic Administrators, the CAA, designation from the National Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association, NIAAA, 
requirements for this designation include attainment of a bachelor's degree or higher from an accredited institution, two or more years of experience as an athletic administrator, completion of the NIAAA Leadership Training Institute courses, and successful completion of the CAA examination. Ms. Albert joins a select group of interscholastic athletic administrators nationwide who have obtained the CAA designation, and she makes our schools and our school system proud. Thank you. Second, any objections? Okay, so we're gonna take a five minute recess. You guys are welcome to stay to enjoy the rest of our wonderful meeting or you're free to go. <laughs> in second motion okay we're back in session so we're gonna move on to our public comment section if there's anybody in the audience that would like to address the school committee feel free to come up to the podium okay seeing Ms. were you gonna could you please state your name and address please uh, my name is Alexander Matthews, principal of Chelsea High School. I'm not sure if this is the right segment to talk about the issue that I wanted to talk about. Is, that, is this the correct session? This is uh, uh, participation in the Greater Boston League, the GBL? Yeah. Is that it's all right? It's a public comment, yes. Okay. So I just wanted to reiterate um, the comments. We were in a, um, uh, I'm not sure of the correct term, but a breakout session in the room right there. Uh, just a few weeks ago, meeting. the subcommittee meeting, to talk about the GBL. Um, and I wanted to just reiterate why uh, it made sense to me. Uh, first of all, it, it uh, was very well researched by Ms. Alpert in terms of all the power rankings to determine whether our level um, of uh, team could compete in that league. Um, but the, uh, the primary reason that I see is that it would provide a network for us um, of athletics starting at middle school. And that is something we don't have. And we would love to see more young people just playing sports. So even if our students aren't winning as many games, if we can get more young people just involved in sports, period, um, that, makes, uh, that really makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, so if we had young people, um, if we had a group of principals, uh, uh, this is another part on the, on the network uh, angle of this. If we had a network of principals, because that's what the GBL features, that could get together, share ideas uh, on how to push athletics for our young people, um, that I think is a big benefit as well. So the network aspect of it and the fact that it starts in middle school, those are the big reasons for me to um, advocate for it. So that's, I just wanted to add my comment. Okay. Thank you. There's anybody else in the audience? Please state your name and address. Yes, ma'am. My name is Stephanie Simon, and I live at 63 Clark Ave. Uh, I'm not really familiar with like all the stats that come with joining the GBL, but I do know that I am a fan of competition, and it's uh, I think it's a really great opportunity because there's, if there's one thing that I wanted, uh, it would be to compete in middle school because I go to these faraway meets and everyone's like, oh, I've been doing track since like fourth grade, and like and then they'd beat me, like <laughs> I would lose to these people that are. Uh, that have been, I guess, developed at a younger age. And I feel like I don't want to be at that disadvantage. I want to be able to 
to say that I've worked hard for like my, like I feel like I missed out on something. So I feel like if we do join the GBL that there would be kids that aren't like me, but maybe there would be more kids like me that you find at the lower levels that want to compete at a level that I do. So I want to say. Okay, thank you. So anybody else would like to address the school committee? No? Yeah, I'm gonna close this section out. Okay, public comment section is closed. Mr. DePato? It's gonna be a heated conversation down the road and I really believe that the school board members do not have a full grip of what we're being asked to consider. So at this time, I would ask through the chair that the superintendent provide us with the records of the last five years of all of our sports teams. Those records themselves will indicate whether we can compete in the Division I league that your GBL represents. Right now, we play in Division Two, Three, and Four League, not a Division One League. So make it perfectly clear that all school board members will know what they're getting into. I would like to have the records of the last five years of every sports team that we offer, upper division, lower division, so each school member could have that information in front of them when there when they're decides to be vote, a vote taken up on this. Okay, so would you like to make a motion to I'm request? I'm making a motion, yes. And just to, if I could, just a clarification though, um, yeah. the, there is no vote on this. It, okay. is, it is the superintendent's um, domain to make the vote, to, to make this determination. Um, certainly, you know, with the input from the school committee, which um, we've done in the policies and procedures, so. So, uh, point of information? So if I make a motion in a second, it means nothing? No, no, you're making data? a motion to yes. to request the, the information. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Positively. Thank you very much. And then we will talk yeah. uh, back mm -hmm. on it on the subcommittee. So yes. you're making a motion to request the data. Do we have a second? Okay. But the decision to go in is yeah. the superintendent. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, in our so it will be policy and procedures? We will bring that no. back to no. Well, the data. The data. Let me make it clear. Okay. So the data to discuss, absolutely. But the decision is the superintendent's, and the superintendent can make the decision virtually at any time. To be to to okay. be honest. So. Um, okay, but does mm -hmm. the school board vote, vote on that? No. The but we can we, makes yeah. that decision. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. However, with the data, we can schedule a meeting probably during the summer um, to discuss the data. So okay. your motion is for the data. It needs a second, a vote, the majority vote. We will run the data. I'll speak with Ms. Okay. Albert to help me get that, those numbers. Okay. So, so with all due respect, can I, get a, can I get a professional lawyer's opinion on that? Because I seem yeah. to think it's been the mm -hmm. school board through the years. You can absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So are we doing a roll call for this request? For the data, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so roll call for the request of the data. What was the roll call vote? Mr. DePato asked for records for the last five years of the team's okay. brackets. Uh, on the motion to request data regarding the last five years of records for the Chelsea teams. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? No. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Carlisle? Yes. Ms. Garcia? No. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Mr. DePato? Yes. That's six in the affirmative, two no, and one absent. The motion carries. Six in the affirmative. Two, I'm sorry, I didn't hear Two no's and one absent, motion passes. <laughs> yes, sorry. Moving on to the report of the superintendent of schools. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would um, like to call forward Assistant Superintendent Sarah Kent for the report on student achievement. Good evening, everybody. Um, this month for the indicators of success, we will be talking about the monthly indicators as usual, but we also have the spring indicator number three and our appendix indicators as usual. If you could start on page three. 
with our attendance for this month. We've had a very good attendance in the month of May. Um, you can see that in grades one through seven and pre-K, we met our goal for the month. They're all above 95%, some as high as 96.5. Eighth grade and kindergarten were also close. Um, for the year, grades two through five are meeting the goal. One, six, seven, eight K and pre-K are close. And the district is 2.2% away from its goal for the year. I would point out, however, that it, that is 0.4% higher than where we were last year at this time. So we are showing gains. If you could turn to page four. At the top of the page, you'll see indicator three, which is kindergarten students scoring proficient or in progress range on the nonsense word fluency correct letter sounds. The spring data of 52% of students reaching that benchmark is short of our goal of 75%, but we have gained 17% um, from the winter. The one thing to note about this um, test, which is an interesting test, it's asking students to sound out words that aren't really words. So when a student, it's a jumble of letters and it's to see if they can sound out the, the letters. But when a kid has started reading, it doesn't make much sense to them anymore. So it's a strange test. So the, the data is interesting. Um, if you could turn to page seven, um, you will see our dropout rate on indicator eight. And you will see <clears throat> that we are doing 0.9% better than we were last year at this time, which is very, very interesting, you know, very positive in that last year at this time, we were at 8.65, and now we're at 7.03. If you look at the breakdown at the bottom of the page, you can see that we're doing quite well with regular education students with 1.85% lower than we were last year. Mm -hmm. Students with disabilities, a full percent lower. And then L's is where we're still struggling, but we are 0.4% lower than we were last year. Unfortunately, we had 21 students drop out in the, in the last month, and if you turn to page seven, you'll see the details on who they were. There were 11 L's, and most of our dropouts this month were in 10th and 11th grade. If you could turn to page nine, which is our mobility, um, the little footnote at the bottom of the first table will show you that our district mobility rate is at 21.89% year to date. And that's almost a full two percentage points higher than last year mm -hmm. at this time. So we have really been hit with a lot of mobility this year and a full fifth of our students have either come or gone or multiple times come and gone. Um, and in reality, that adds up to 1,339 students have either come or gone this year. If you just add up those totals in the, in the bottom corner. And that's the data that we have for you now and that I know the school year is ending. However, we do not have yet our fourth quarter grades um, that we can share with you. I will have those for you next month. Are there any questions about the indicators of success data for tonight? Any questions for Ms. Kat? Mr. DePato? Yes, um, I just want to make a comment. I was uh, very happy and pleased when I had a conversation with Mr. Smith about the Chelsea High School Academy. And initially, when he made the presentation, he said they were earmarking for four kids in his, in his program to graduate. Mm -hmm. And when I asked him tonight, he says, we have three kids that are graduating. We have 11 other kids. If they go to summer school and pass their courses, they will also get certificates. And I think that that's fantastic. And I want to yep. thank him for a yes. job well done. Exactly. He kept his promise. He said he's going to earmark at least four kids would yep. graduate. Yes. And I, I just wanted to make sure that uh, I, I was very happy with that. Yes, I believe that he's planning to have 11 students walk on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, some of those still need, as you say, a summer school course or two. Some need a, an MCAS test. Um, but having 11 out of 50 um, walking is pretty remarkable. I think and that's it, fantastic for our kids. Yes. I think that it's important to note that those are 11 students who were predicted to have dropped mm -hmm. out. So those are, those are students we've saved yeah. and we've pulled back 
um, and basically given a future to. Yes. So thank you. So before I leave, I just wanted to point out that you all have a copy of our <laughs> district AIP for next year. This is our accelerated improvement plan. The purpose of this document, um, it's written by a team of administrators from across the district, um, from different schools, elementary, middle, high school, um, as well as some of our curriculum coordinators. And the purpose of this document is to be a guide or an umbrella under which all of the turnaround and accelerated improvement plans for the schools will follow and align with. So this is sort of the beacon that they all follow. Um, and they are in the process now of writing their school AIPs and turnaround plans um, that will be submitted to DESE by the end of August for next year. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. I think if I could just also point out on the district accelerated improvement plan that what this really does is um, the last couple of years we have made sure that we have had two goals, one of, of course the instructional academic side and one the, um, the social emotional learning side. For us this year it's really about the teams integrating this into everyday instruction, every minute of the day instruction. And so um, the integration of our trauma sensitive, uh, trauma informed, culture responsive work, um, our social emotional learning training, all of it is culminating into the real accelerated work in this area for the coming year. So we're very excited about it. Thank you, Ms. Kent. Um, Moving on with my report, Madam Chair, I commend to the record Enclosure B, which is the personnel update. Um, we have nine new hires. We have eight resignations, retirements, and terminations. We have zero promotions, transfers, and we have zero leaves of absences. Um, keeping in mind that um, the, the larger turnover uh, for our district really comes in our, um, our end of year report, which we will present in September, unless we have an August meeting. Hopefully the state will give us money and we'll need an August meeting, um, and we will, we will report that, uh, that data then. The enrollment report, I am also commending to the record in closure C. We have 6,144 students in district, 182 districts uh, uh, students outplaced in the uh, out of the district for a total enrollment of 6,326. And if there are no questions on that, my final piece, um, just under communication, we do not have many dates or announcements for you because we're winding down school the school year, but certainly graduation is Sunday, one o'clock. Um, Chelsea High School, the Veterans Stadium. Um, the last day of school for our students is Friday, June 14th, and the last day for teachers is Monday, June 17th. We are definitely getting out earlier this year. We only had one snow day, um, so it's, the, it's gonna be a very long summer for our students and our staff. Mr. Zapato? Yes, through the chair, um, Last conversation we had about the, the enrollment in Chelsea was going down because a lot of families were losing, uh, moving to Lynn. Where, where's that stand right now, Mr. Superintendent? Uh, we are losing families to Lynn. About how many people have we lost? Well, I, I would have to double check the numbers. I would ask that we wait until um, the summertime because we, we need to close out our databases and our enrollment and transfers. Um, usually every single year, it's either the August or the September meeting, I will give you a full listing of that. And I will also, um, Terry actually did the last um, run of the data in terms of where students are moving to and where students are coming in from. Yeah. So um, if you can wait throughout the summer, that will be, we'll yeah, go I, there. I, I'll wait, but I, I think in the conversation that you had mentioned, I kind of remember the number of about 250 people that we left Chelsea to pull in. And just, so we'll get an update on that later on. Yeah, it wasn't 200, it was overall 200 from Chelsea High School when we looked at a comparison of January to January. Okay. Um, and so what you can look at is yeah. if you wanna look at your mobility, which is page nine. In May. So take a look at page nine. The last column over to the right, 
Mm -hmm. So the number of students total in the district who moved into the district is 748. No number of uh, students moving out is 591. Now we will break that down further and we will break it down according to what community they're going to within the state, what state they're going to. So it could be another state, it could be Florida. And then what we will also do is we will um, break it down in terms of country. So it's coming in, going out. The other thing is in terms of what you're referring to in terms of Lynn, that was something back in January. And at that point, Lynn had the highest number of students that had moved, uh, had moved out of Chelsea too as a destination. And at that time, it was 44. We do have other communities that they're moving to. Revere seems to have had an uptick in terms of students moving um, out. At the same time, I will say the last two months we have seen an increase in the number of students coming from um, the, the three countries of Central America. So it's, it's always a give and take in terms of the ins and outs. But so, we'll get you with the information. Yeah, so that number is alarming though, right? In terms of 144, we lost 140. She says 70 something in May. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. That, your um, that concludes. Oh, no, it doesn't conclude. Thank you. Um, there is a change. You received an email from Terry in terms of a change on the November meeting. Um, and so Terry has given you the hard copy of um, the meetings for the year. So okay. Madam Chair, that concludes my report. Thank you. Moving along to committee reports. Yes. Meetings. Okay. Do we have a second? Any objections? No? Okay. So, unfinished business, we have none. We're going to move on to new business. We took care of the first two already earlier, so we're going to move on. Ms. Enrique moves to adopt the non-bargaining salary and wage schedules for the 2019-2020. Each year, the school committee reviews and approves the non-bargaining salary and wage schedules for hourly positions and salaried positions. These are positions that are not subject to any bargaining agreement. Hourly or daily positions include daily substitutes, cr crossing guards, for example, and positions are divided into instructional staff, support staff, student worker, substitute teacher, and summer feeding program. The pay structure for salaried staff was created by the Collins Center at UMass Boston in 2014 and has been maintained and updated by the district since then. The pay structure consists of nine classifications, A through I, and unclassified. Recommended revisions to the hourly schedule are itemized in the attached staff report and are designated to respond to upcoming changes in the Massachusetts minimum wage and to align the district with other hourly rates in the area. Recommended changes to the salary ranges largely align with the 2.25% increase in a bargain salary this year while also trying to maintain the integrity of each range and reduce overlap or compaction. These schedules are considered to be school department policy and as such require school committee approval. Roll call. Bargaining salary and wage schedules for 2019-2020. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Carlisle? Yes. Ms. Garcia? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Mr. DePato? Yes. That's eight in the affirmative and one absent. Eight in the affirmative, one absent, motion passes. Next, Ms. Enrique moves to approve a budget transfer in the amount of 891200 to move funds from the following accounts. Kelly M Elementary School, 20000 Sakalowski Elementary, 10000 Clark Ave Middle, 98500 Brown Middle School, 82000 Wright Middle, 150,000. Chelsea High, 70,000. Benefit and payroll, 318,700. Instruction and assessment, 122,000. Other instructional programs, 20,000 for a total of 891,200. Moving to district administration, 104,600. Facilities and transportation, 766,600, Early Learning Center, 20,000. 
The funds available for transfer are from several sources, including salary savings, unused duplicating funds, salary benefits, contingency, and reduced textbook expenses. Funding is being transferred to district administration for some salary expenses, duplicating costs, furniture and equipment, and some contractual services. Funding for facilities maintenance and transportation will be used for facilities maintenance, summer projects, and overtime costs. And funding is being added back to the Early Learning Center as a previous budget transfer overestimated the amount of salary savings here. Roll call. Approve a budget transfer in the amount of $891,200. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Carlisle? Yes. Ms. Garcia? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Mr. DePato? Yes. That's eight in the affirmative and one absent. Eight in the affirmative, one absent. Motion passes. Consideration and action to approve the updated wellness policy. Explanation. Updated wellness policy that reflects a need to research alternative to using recess as a consequence. Roll call. And the motion to approve an, uh, the updated wellness policy. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Carlisle? Yes. Ms. Garcia? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Mr. DePato? Yes. That's eight in the affirmative and one absent. Eight in the affirmative, one absent, motion passes. Consideration and action to accept the amended children in the workplace policy. Chelsea Public Schools recognizes the need for the superintendent to be able to offer flexibility in the workplace to administrators who are expected to work beyond normal school day hours. Roll call. On the motion to approve the amended children in the workplace policy, Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Carlisle? Yes. Ms. Garcia? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Mr. DePato? No. That's seven in the affirmative, one no, and one absent. Seven in the affirmative, one no, one absent. Motion passes. Consideration and action to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve a field trip to Saco, Maine for one student, one chaperone, and one parent on June 8, 2019. A Chelsea High School student athlete has the opportunity to compete in all the New England track and field meet taking place at the Thornton Academy in Saco, Maine. Out of state field trips must be approved by the school committee. Do we do a roll call? We just make a motion to upset. So do we have a motion to, to approve this field trip? Any objections? No. Motion passes. Consideration and action to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve a field trip to Funtown Splashtown in Saco, Maine for the end of summer REACH program celebration, August 8, 2019. Approximately 55 to 60 students are planning to make a trip to Funtown Splashtown on August 8 from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. They will be chaperoned by five to six staff members. Out of state field trips must be approved by the school committee. Do we have a motion to accept Field trip. Any objections? No. Motion passes to for the field trip. We don't have any communications. Announcements. Well, I just want to say a few words as I. This is my favorite time of year because you know all year they're working hard and we hear so many stuff, but we have this day to celebrate and just to focus on the positive of all the great things that our educators are doing and our students are doing here. Um, I was proud of all of them, but especially Jose, I, he was one of my students years ago, so I've seen the growth. And when he spoke and I saw Miss K out there crying, I'm like, don't do that, because I gotta wait till Sunday, that's when I cry. <laughs> so it was heartwarming and to see his mother too, because she's really has stood by him. and. There's many Jose's in our cities, and I was so happy to hear him speak and say how the Chelsea Opportunity Academy has helped him because I know we've gotten some pushback on that. People didn't believe it could work. Um, so I'm so happy that we could offer this, this other alternative to these students and to see that he's going somewhere after he graduates. Um, so 
They were not here, our student rep, Alicia and Manuel, they're both, they're graduating Sunday, they have a lot to do, but we have gifts for them and we thank them for their time, um, for being very involved. Um, I like when our student reps are vocal and they come and they speak and they definitely did that. Alicia's going to Framingham State mm -hmm. and Manuel is going to? Um, Bucknell, right. Bucknell. And he received the Posse Scholarship, so we're very proud of them. Um, this is our last meeting of the school year. I just want to let everybody know to have a happy, safe summer. Um, there is a reading list out for all of them. Oh, summer absolutely. reading. Okay, that, so make sure yeah. you are out <laughs> getting your summer reading list and your. But enjoy overall. Enjoy your summer. Madam Chair. Ms. Garcia would like to say something. Um, I'd like to make two closing remarks, if I can. Um, my first remark is regarding the amended children in the workplace policy. I'm in full support of this policy because being a mother is not easy. I am one of five children. My mother had, a, had to work 20 years in a factory. When my grandmother passed away, no one else could take care of us. So my mother stayed home, opened up a daycare, and took care of all of us. She was forced to quit her job because no children were allowed in a factory. If we want to keep our tremendous staff here in Chelsea Public Schools, we need to learn how to support our parents. Raise your hand if you are a mother in the room. Raise your hand if you are a father in the room. Great. Is it easy? No, right? We need to learn how to be flexible and work with our staff if we want to keep and maintain people working in our district. So that's my spot. I mean, Thank that's my remark. Thank um, you, and then on a lighter note, um, have a wonderful summer, everyone. Um, for those students who um, have their summer reading assignment, make sure to do it and get some sleep. Stay out of trouble. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody over here wanted Miss Santiago. I wanted to commend the Berkowitz School um, this past week. Uh, there was an amazing opportunity. They had their first school dance, mm -hmm. um, which is something that I was really excited about. Um, the kids were super joyful. Um, the teachers, the administration did an excellent job. The DJ did a phenomenal job. Um, and it's just a reminder that when we sort of insert a little more play in dance, uh, it's just really amazing to see parents and students connecting. And um, it was just a job well done. So I was really excited and wanted to commend the principal. Fortunately, they left uh, right after the recess. Um, but I uh, would love to see more of that and, and just reconnecting around the spirit of, you know, the mission of our schools and what it means to be a student in the city of Chelsea. So thank you all for making that happen. Um, I want to make sure the teachers and administration. I'll make sure he, hear, he hears yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mr. DePato, you want to? Children in the workplace. I took the time to call five major, major high schools around here, five. And every one of those schools have a no children in the workplace. There are no exceptions. That's why I voted no. But on a good note, I want to invite everybody to the Chelsea High School softball game this Saturday at Carter Park at 3.30 and see if the Red Devils can get off to a good start. And for all the people watching, I hope you have a good, a good summer. I hope your kids get a job for the summer, so to bring some money into the house, and uh, we'll see you back in the fall. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Almost second month. <laughs> Lord oh. have mercy, you guys work hard. I mean, I thought city council works hard, but. Yeah. So I'm Super glad meeting. you're saying we, it we, on We air. have a social life out here in the school department here. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank everybody for, um, you know, doing all the good things and all the students. Uh, this week and last week and week before, I was out every day, 8, 9 o'clock, like tonight. Um, but I just want to thank everybody for the opportunity. I learned a lot from Dr. Bork, uh, our new superintendent coming in. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. All the assistant superintendents and finance uh, person and the secretaries and ladies take the notes and the votes for us. Thank you for being here and supporting us. And I'm also excited because I was asked to do something different uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and I decided to stay where I'm at right now. So thank you guys. Well, thank you. Miss Carlisle. Is there anything else? Hey, 
Henry's energy is good. Well, He's welcome aboard, to Henry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I would like to take this opportunity to say how proud I am, and this is the best part of the whole year is when we see the students and we recognize the students uh, for their abilities and their accomplishments. Um, and to the people who are retiring, you saw it, 33 years, 22 years, I mean, 10 years, even if three years, they stayed in the Chelsea Public Schools and they educated our children and I appreciate what they do for us too. And uh, everybody have a nice summer. Ms. Alfaro. Uh, all the dedicated people that was here today, especially at the Parent Center, is the first point of encounter when we have our families um, walking in and having the friendly atmosphere. And also on the uh, children policy, I'm so happy that we were in support of, um, really, you know, uh, in favor of that because the workplace that I work at is really flexible in allowing us, even now that I have my grandchildren, as we were given the awards, I was like, okay, that's my grandson crying there. <laughs> so the flexibility in today's world, the pressure that we have in, in working, these kind of flexibilities are, you know, value to the employees. And uh, we put dedications as uh, we are also, you know, getting the the other side in support. And also I would like to uh, say that uh, very happy with Jose that he was accepted to Benjamin Franklin. His mom, Brenda Liz, is really active in our community. And in the summer, I'm gonna see most of the students as where I work at the Chelsea Collaborative, we have the Summer Youth Employment Program and we hope that uh, most of you can um, encourage you to learn new things and to continue to be engaged in our community. Have a safe summer, and yes, remember to do your reading, and if you need support, the library is gonna be uh, having a lot of activities, and also in the Chelsea schools, I know that we're gonna have a lot of support for the, the students. Okay, we do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion. Okay, thank you, <laughs> 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 Meeting.